right, ladies and gentlemen, you have waited all week. Yeah, Boogie yeah. Page. Throwing it down for things BMX is ready. I know I am. Protect the ATV Airways. Welcome to the All Things BMX Show. We hope you're ready for episode 144. The bag man himself has returned to the All Things BMX Show. We have Nick Long. He's the current vet pro, flat pedal man himself, team manager, Haro BMX. Big shout out to LB's BMX race team for tuning in for tonight's show. I got the man himself, PF, hanging out to me. How are you, buddy? What's up? What's up? Happy to be here. Good Made to see you again. over. It's good to see you again. Yeah, yeah. I've got the captain on. I got to come over here for the captain. You got to come out, man. Uh, Melissa is going to be joining us this evening on the Danger Snack satellite feed because they pony up and pay for it. Danger Snack. It's the snack. It's the difference between dragon ass and hauling ass. And you know all about it, right? I've dropped many a Danger Snack just to keep it up, fired up. When you're Wake going you home? Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. Our opening song is brought to you by none other than the man himself, boogie man make sure you guys check him out on spotify and all the cool hip places that you listen to music nowadays and his brand new single drops the boogie train with savannah brady you can find it on his facebook page and also over on spotify the link will be in the chat you guys don't forget you can support the show you can send us stars on facebook and can join us over at buy us a coffee where you can donate right to the show our michigan studio where melissa how are you melissa not too bad. What's the weather like up there, Melissa? <laughs> uh, warm. Is it? We're close close to 50. Very nice. Yeah, I brought it home with me, apparently. That's right. Melissa Studio is brought to you by our good friends at DeSoto BMX. Where you go if you want to race under the big top. Make sure you guys check them out. The Florida Studio, where Mr. Fell and I are hanging out this evening, is brought to you by good people at C2 at Condos. It's, it's not so braggy when it's 50 degrees, you know? Well, I look can't, in February. Can't really, can't really it is. brag it. You can't really brag so much, you know. It, what it, about right how now? it is now here? I mean, I, I came over here, windows down, sunroof open, like Eminem blasting the whole way. Everyone in Michigan is doing the same. There, that's what I'm saying. I felt the vibe. Yeah, it's good times. It's good times, right? I mean, it's supposed to rain all day tomorrow, so what? What? What's the what, What's the temperature going to be like tomorrow, though? Uh, close to fifty, I think. Again, we'll take it. We're for pretty February. much not. Not going to get below that till next week. Yeah, we'll take it. 
And if you guys are looking for the ultimate BMX vacation rental, make sure you guys check out C2 at Condos. The show's chat is brought to you by BMX Rocks Photography. Make sure you guys check them out. Look, we got a good chat question for you this evening. So those of you that are involved uh, in in, in the local tracks or any sort of track, if you guys help out, if you're on the board or whatever you do, we had had, uh, a viewer reach out to us with a very, very good question. Uh, and they wanted to ask this and share it with the ATV nation. What have you seen tracks do to help build the open class? Which I thought was a really good question. I was like, damn, that's a, that's a great question. Yeah. All right. So ATV nation, put it in the chat. Uh, we have people in here that are everything from TOs to just announcers to volunteer, not just announcers, announcers are very important, but we got, you know, volunteers that just shovel rake and everything. What have you guys saw that's brought success? into growing the open classes the bmx newsmaker segment is brought to you by our good friends at 110 nutrition showcase is brought to you by our good friends at answer bmx melissa's world famous trivia is brought to you by last week's guest bombshell racing system mm-hmm. dj damon who will be here in two weeks we're finally going to get the dj back in the house brought to you by truth bmx products the birthday shout outs are brought to you by On Two Wheels. The show opening is brought to you by our good friends at Gate Nine Custom Number Plates. And make sure you guys check out our live stream version of tonight's show. You can watch the replays at YouTube or you can join us tonight. It's brought to you by Mega Design. The podcast version of the show is brought to you by Die Job Apparel, which is dropping all kinds of new products. Die Job just dropped brand new transponder holders today. I saw it in the chat. Pretty awesome custom transponder holders. All right, without further ado, let's welcome in our guest. Nick, how are you? I am doing pretty good. What an intro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's not just, hey, what's up, Nick? Come on in. Yeah, was that a, was that all by memory or you got that written down on a projector so? Uh memory. Oh, yeah. That's impressive. No, no. There, there's a script. There's a there's <laughs> there's notes. <laughs> Man, how is it? How, man, how are you doing, man? And where are you at right now, by the way? Uh, we are doing good. We uh, we just got to a RV campground just outside of the Houston track. Um, we're not able to get in for camping yet. So uh, we picked up Ethan Popovich this afternoon at the track when it was dumping rain on him. Um, so he's camping out with us this weekend. Um, we just got done. I just made dinner for the Great American Chili Cook-Off, and I was the only entry, so I won. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we're just relaxing, enjoying the show. Fantastic. And thank you for joining us and, and, and coming back on the show. We, we, we really appreciate it. Is that, is that your default dish? Uh, no, I just, for some reason, Lindsay brought it up the other day, and it, I couldn't get it out of my mind, so I had to make it. With the weather and everything, it just felt like that was the, that was the way to go? Yeah, I think driving in, it just... It, it had to be done tonight. Uh, yeah, it was like 55 out today, rainy and like 20 mile an hour wind. So it was time for the chili cook off. All right, be- well, here's the here's the hundred dollar question: beans or no beans? Ooh. I just I just saw this episode in Yellowstone, and uh, <laughs> but I added beans for sure. We got to get the extra gains in it. Not for me, but uh, Popovich has got a big week to hit. <laughs> and then and then our all right, Epop. Where's Epop from? Uh, I can't tell you what city it is. It's Valspario or something. <laughs> yeah. Valparaiso, Indiana. Yeah. All right, so he's got that Midwest pull. All right, here's the, here's a question: yep. Spaghetti in the chili or chili as the topping? On top of spaghetti? Yeah, that's a Midwest thing, uh, isn't it? Yeah, I I, I don't think I'd be it. fucking with that. Yeah. So so spaghetti in the chili or no? I do spaghetti with spaghetti sauce and maybe meatballs and the chili by itself. <laughs> I'm going with Nick. <laughs> All right. And I'm Midwest, I'll do chili man. on rice. I actually tried that recently, and I, I kind of liked it. I used to do that at um, that one buffet garden place that had no meat. I forget the name of it. Never heard of it. Golden Corral? No, it was like oh. some it was some place. They <laughs> That's all meat. Yeah, I know. That's what I was gonna. Ponderosa? No, it was so, it oh. was something. I'll, I forget it. I'll I'll remember it halfway through. Look, I'm a yeah, big... just fire it off like it yeah, off just the top of your head. like Tourette's later, just yeah, yelling yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we're off and running now. All right, Nick, tell us about uh, some of the highlights of 2022, man. Oh man, the highlights or the lowlights? Because the lowlight stories were pretty damn funny. Getting well, the, the totaled was cool. Oh. Catching up with 
pretty cool. Going through tires were cool. <laughs> all right, take it away. Um, Let's go low lights, and then we'll come back to highlights. All right. Um, yeah, what do you want to know? I mean. O- almost the same list. <laughs> yeah. But, that, I mean, I guess that was the best story besides breaking my foot, too. So I, I guess it kind of all started there. I broke my foot off in the end of April at Barry's house. Um, kind of got marooned there for like four weeks. Had to cancel a couple, you know, clinics, um, but got through and got back in time for the summer camp at Cape Coral. Um, Did I go to Rockford after that? I think Rockford was after the summer camp. Um, We got to race there anyways, but we were leaving the summer camp, uh, kind of rushing away from a a hurricane uh, slash tropical storm. Uh, Drove till about one in the morning, got out of the cone zone and then. Yeah, it's got a truck plowed through our trailer um, in the Love's parking lot. I can't remember what town it was in Florida, but just outside of Tampa, maybe. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, as terrible as the morning was, it uh, the situation couldn't have got much better. Um, the guy who hit us, he was like an old military vet. He, I mean, it was kind of a sad story he had. It was cool to listen to. Um, but anyways, they... His boss came, they were, his shop was only about 20 minutes away. Um, his boss came over and, you know, just was super cool guy. He, he was like, you know, how do we make this, how do we fix this problem? And I was just, I just kind of want to get it back on the road, you know, and he, uh, he got a tow truck, got the trailer picked up. He got another pickup truck for all of our stuff out of the trailer that got pushed out. Um, we drove over to his shop. He had like lunch waiting for us. Uh, I was unloading the rest of the stuff out of the trailer and he, he found a trailer for us. So we went and, um, picked up the new trailer, swapped everything over, left the, the tuna cans one at his shop and got back on the road. And like, I think it was about a 10 hour turnaround from the time we got smashed. Wow. All right. So that was a pretty crazy story, but yeah, that all started with breaking my foot off at Barry's and they kind of spiraled all into that. So it was all kind of one, <laughs> one long story that ended up with that. Nothing, nothing started in Alabama this year. No, Al- no, no Alabama track. Sorry, no. we, had, we had to wait. <laughs> we had to wave him off for season. We tra- actually, I tried getting one later in October, but I don't know if I uh, pulled through with it yet. I don't. I'd have to look at the list. Right. Um, we caught on fire too. That one was pretty crazy. Right outside of New York City, like, um, maybe late July, and it was kind of. I mean, it was. We were driving. Uh, Lindsay got up to go pee or something, and she she's like, "Hey, it's." there's smoke back there. And I'm, you know, like, what do you mean? He's like, there's smoke coming from under the bed. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, I can't pull over. Like we're, you know, basically downtown area. Um, and there's no shoulder, nothing. So I would have just had to stop on the freeway. So I'm, I'm kind of panicking, uh, drive. We get up to an exit and I just kind of pull off block the exit as I get off on the, you know, wherever over the curb and up getting a flat tire on the trailer, but we get out the back, cabinets of the motorhome where i had my solar power like inverter was in there and where i bored through like to run the wire to the batteries it had wore through i didn't stupidly didn't put the plastic coating on the wire and it shorted the whole cabinet so all the um, carpet off the inside liner melted and started on fire Mm. and we got there and you know put it out it was pretty stressful but yeah i mean if we wouldn't if i would have had to drive another five more minutes we would have probably lost the whole motorhome like that if I wouldn't have had that exit coming up, that'd have been bad. Yeah, it was. It, I mean, <laughs> have you yeah, ever, it was. Have you ever caught on fire when you're after we got it figured out? But it was pretty stressful. Like engine problems or anything? Have you ever had that? Like on the highway? Like me? Yeah. Uh, no, but uh, when I was going to college, uh, I was leaving one day and I watched a Fiero burn. Mm. Like the whole oh, thing yeah. melted in front of me. Like that would that was poor Fiero. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, and if you guys don't know, I think uh, Melissa had one. Melissa, had, you had a, you had a Fiero. <laughs> Melissa had a Fiero. <clears throat> wait, wait, wait. What color was it? White? No, it was cherry red. Cherry red. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah, that thing was a tank. No power steering. I my, I never had such great arm muscles <laughs> I had that car. <laughs> Man, I I tell you what though, we I was driving the MCS truck and trailer, and. I smelt something, and then all of a sudden, it was like a gas line had broke in the engine. And next thing you know, all every it was smoking, and I was like on fire, like NASCAR when they're going around the track and they're mm-hmm. on fire. 
that I was just like, get, get this thing over, get this thing over. It was, it was, I was scared to death that the Damn. whole thing was going to go up. I can't remember yeah. if I had anybody in the back seat or not, like, <laughs> any, any riders in the back, but I was just like freaking out. It was, it was ter- I was terrified that the whole, the yeah. whole thing was going to catch into flames and I was going to burn up, you know, NAS- yeah. NASCAR style. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We haven't had that one yet, luckily. We blew a serpentine belt, which was a bit of a bummer, but I, I fixed that up. Isn't it amazing what you learn as you go? Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, kind of. I mean, I, I, I feel like I'm fairly handy. My uh, my trailer is basically my garage. I have every tool I own in there. So I'm mostly prepared for most situations. But, yeah, being handy is something that, I mean, if you're going to, if anybody's looking to attempt something that, like what we're doing, you you better be handy, or you better have a a good savings account to pay for these. Uh, work, exactly. Work, work, medic or uh, mechanic bills. I mean, I I learn as I go. I learn as the situation happens. Like, yeah, I can't believe I tell pe I tell like like mechanic friends of mine that I I spliced two fuel lines <laughs> together on on tour one time, and. <laughs> I don't know how I did it. I couldn't tell you now how I did it, but like it, it, we did it and it worked and we got to like Tulsa or some place we were going. I don't know where we were going, but driver ingenuity is, and that's kind of what you got to have. Oh, the, the guy at the auto parts store. Oh, it's no problem. Just go in here and here, cut this off here, put this in here. You, you're done. Look at you split. Did, <laughs> did that happen in my hometown? Like, were you ever yeah. around Durand? No, I don't think so. Oh, all right. Hey, Nick, uh, <laughs> Let's talk about the success of the uh, duffel bag dash that you had. Yeah. Like, like, where did this idea come from? Um, it came from listening to one of the Coffee Chatter episodes, um, the episode with Riley on it, I mm-hmm. believe. Um, and, yeah, I can't remember the exact conversation. I think it might have had to do with Tyler's whole shot challenge, and the, he was able to raise that money, like, his – total purse stuff from just local sponsors and stuff like that. And I think they talked about that on the episode. And then, um, they four year James were talking about why doesn't somebody just, you know, do that for the world cup races. And I kind of just thought to myself, like, damn, I feel like I could probably be that person in some sense. So I kind of just, I thought about it while I was just driving. It's kind of what I do and what anybody does when they're driving is you get lost thinking about shit. And, um, yeah, I just kind of reached out to like, I think, yeah i don't know how exactly i approached it initially but i think i just called my uncle um he he runs a a business in san diego and i i just i knew when i worked for him a couple years ago to help uh pay for our wedding stuff i knew he would like sponsor little league teams and stuff like that Mm -hmm. to help pay for fees and stuff like that like 150 250 bucks and so i was kind of anticipating just starting off like that and my goal was to you know make raise like maybe two thousand bucks to give you know to each winner of the boys and girls like men and women's pro classes and um yes i i reached out to my uncle and first and he's like you know he liked the idea and he's like ah yeah i'll donate i'll give you four grand and i'm like whoa you know and it kind of just it kind of just rocket shifted it and even when people started hearing about that like that type of donation that large and you know when you hear like oh i donated 25 bucks or whatever like that that does help in the overall goal, but when you hear somebody like donate, whoa, that thing that kind of made it sound serious, and mm-hmm. uh, it kind of just caught traction um, and kind of took off. And I mean, it was I never anticipated for it to be like that. And I got a lot of questions like if I thought ABA or USA BMX was gonna give me a hard time, like I was trying to compete against them, and, it, and I never even thought about it like that. It was it was more just you know just trying to be I don't know trying to be the person that. I wish I had for me when I was, you know, that young pro, like if somebody was there giving us extra money for, just mm-hmm. for doing something that we already loved, that was, that was kind of what it initially started to be or what it, what it was. And, uh, you know, I was just fortunate, fortunate enough to be able to raise that kind of money for the riders. And it just was pretty cool. Nice. So, well, f- first things first, can you text me your uncle's number? <laughs> <laughs> you, you got a fundraising yeah. system you need uh, help with? Yeah. Yeah. We're working on it now. <laughs> uh, yeah we haven't quite got it all nailed down but we're working on it it's, it's almost ready it's a, it's a loose program but we're coming with it very very loose very fast <laughs> uh 
Okay, so tell us how it works if somebody wants to say somebody's listening and they're like, "Hey, I want to be part of this." How do they go about that? Um, I mean, in simple terms, you're kind of just giving me money and not <laughs> keep track of it. Um, and I like I like it more when like you know individuals are great, you know. But I like when you have like a logo that way I could add it to like the big checks in the air, and that makes makes me feel like I'm people don't think I'm being shady with the money because I do keep track of it and I don't keep any of it. Um, so I, but yeah, basically if somebody wants to donate money, um, you can message me through whatever platform, um, or email. And yeah, I mean, if you want to donate 10, 15, 25 bucks, I'm happy to take it and add it to the account. And, you know, I keep track of it and it'll be on the, I'm going to do a big list, you know, throughout my social media posts, tagging, well, I probably won't tag because I can't tag that many people, but at least, you know, put their names on a, on a, like a flyer and, and mm -hmm. thank everybody. So, um, yeah, I mean, basically that's, that's as simple as it gets and is, you know, being forward and upfront with where the money's going. Uh, even like the raffle, some of them, you know, like this, net, this raffle that I got going on right now, I'm doing, it's up to 500 bucks. So, you know, say the raffle makes 750, I get to keep 250 bucks. Those are my own products that I had. Mm -hmm. Um, but the 500 goes to the person. You know, not, not all of them will be like that. A lot of them will probably be just full donated to the purse. Um, but yeah, the other just goes to gas money if I need it. You know. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. And that's I, just and that's just your normal Instagram and Facebook stuff, right? To get a hold of you. Yeah. Or I mean, yeah. If you got my number or my emails on, I think it was scrolling across the bottom of the screen there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Just get in contact. I'm sure. I mean, BMX is a fairly small world. You can probably find my number through somebody you know. Right on. Yeah, but Fel, Fel's pretty liberal with giving it out. Yeah, yeah just, I, bet, just, I bet he's pretty loose with handing my number out. Yeah, just text me. I'll, I'll send it. I'll group chat it. <laughs> <laughs> how, okay, total, how much did you raise last year? Um, I forgot. I don't know exactly. I think it was like 22,500 wow. or 22,050 or something like that. I can't That's remember. Insane. That's insane. Totally it was around twenty two thousand, I think, is what I, I ended up doing. I thought it was so cool with the grand. So when you were giving out like stacks of money and they were throwing the money up, yes. like yes, let's do it. Yeah, I, I mean that was. I thought they were at night trips for a second. I was just like, yeah, <laughs> do it. We do brought Tulsa Tuesday to the night show. Oh my god, that, that's what I'm saying. They should be a, a sponsor of this program. It's right but, there. I mean, it was it was kind of like it, I just wanted to make it a show. You know, it was it wasn't about me. It was about the athletes who got to be up there on the stage and they got to, you know, kind of make, make a show of it with this money. And I, I mean, yeah, so many people thought it was real. I, even Elise didn't want to throw her money because she, she thought the money in the bag was real. <laughs> so she didn't throw hers. Um, but I you know I got up there. I was like, just throw, throw the shit out of this, you know, make it just, cause it just looks cool in the photos and videos. And then I paid everybody behind scenes. Cause I mean, what, what was I going to do carrying around $22,000 of yeah, cash? Exactly. You know? All I know is I've asked every every single person I have a contact for. I want some of those dollars, right? Like, I, yeah, I, I gave a bunch of them out, like for the autograph signing. I was like signing them and giving the little kids. It was pretty cool. Right. I, I hope I hope nobody at the like the um, uh, arena. What am I trying to say? Like, didn't get ripped off by these fake hundred dollar bills. It says copy <laughs> and everything on it. I got them off Amazon, but I think I. I probably had like five hundred thousand dollars worth of fake cash. <laughs> well, I have yet to have anybody give them to me. So Oldsmar's <laughs> coming up. So if anybody's listening and that has some, well, it's kind of I kind of want some it's like for the like, little collection I got. You know, I like I like I like, I like shit like that. I'm sorry. I think it's cool. You're gonna try to use it at Capone's, aren't you? Yes. Well, <laughs> Capone, <laughs> you son of a bitch, you don't don't you you all right, you brought it up. Uh, no. All right, you brought hey. it up. Did did you did you or did you not have a great time, Melissa? Did you or did you not have a great time at Capone's? We're talking to Nick. I'm not We're talking real. to Nick. <laughs> yeah. okay. yeah. Melissa and I will plead the Fifth Capone. Amendment. Okay. All, All right. right. If you want to run it like that, yeah. you can run it like that. Uh, Nick, plans for 2023 to make uh, to make this bigger. Um, I mean, I I guess just starting it off now last year i did it i started at it um right after the louisville race it was on my drive back west um so i, I mean i really only had what was that maybe three months to raise that so i mean that was i mean that's that makes that kind of even more impressive is raising that much money in that time frame so 
this year I'm, I'm i started it already in january um we we raised 2100 after january we're up to about 2650 or 2670 right now after the um the clinic i did at albuquerque the track donated the money back for like the clinic fee back to the duffel bag dash so that was another 400 bucks um so i think we're yeah like 2670 right now um and then this raffle that i'm doing hopefully it gets bumped up a little bit and we'll get another 500 bucks in there by saturday and um yeah so i mean it's just kind of i'm just giving myself more time to do it um you know maybe we'll figure out tax things along the way but uh i'm not too worried about it right next second <laughs> i don't think you're i think you're all right for a while yeah i, w- I would hope anyway i hope so i mean i'm just kind of the middle giving money back away to other people so just kind of holding we'll, it you know we'll at some point nick are you going to do multiple raffles throughout the year yeah i i, I mean as much as i can i'm tr- i mean i don't want to wear people out and be annoying but uh i mean at the end of the day it's just raising money back for for the riders that are racing and putting on a show for us um but yeah, I, I plan on trying to do it at least every month i have some pretty cool prizes i think i'm gonna do i just got um two pretty cool watches i'm, I'm gonna do for a month coming up here soon i know i want to do the bike that i have right this second because I just ordered a new frame that's a little bit longer than the one I have. is a little bit too short. So I'm going to raffle that bike off here in the next month or so. Um, but, yeah, I got I got a few people um, that donate, want to donate prizes and stuff to, you know, help boost funds for this. So it's it's not always just about, you know, handing money over. People mm-hmm. are donating prizes and stuff to them. I know Brian, Brian did some Carbone Wheels last year. Um we had Mike West at a barbecue for the Grands raffle. It was pretty cool. I think he, he was talking to me in, at my Goodyear clinic last week, and he wants to do something again. So, um, yeah, maybe look out for another barbecue system or something coming up soon. Um, but, yeah, ideally, once a month would be pretty cool. Make it run for maybe two or three weeks at a time. You'll have some more carbon wheels. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I got to be on, Brian. Yeah, don't worry. Don't I'll, box, just... I'll box them up tomorrow. I'll send them out. <laughs> Uh, so switching gears, uh, let's talk about the clinic and the clinic tour. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what's new for, uh, 2023. In what sense? Uh, new tracks. Are you adding anything different to what you did last year? And like, you know, how, how have things gone so far this year? Um, let's see. Or have you changed up the program any, like, have you made adjustments to the program? from last year to this year? I mean, my, my overall routine is will probably be close to the same for anybody who's going to, you know, join again. The idea wasn't really for people to, you know, join over and over and over. My goal was to go to different tracks and have new riders. But the the riders that who do – I do get riders that come to five, six, seven of them sometimes just depending on what area I'm in because they just enjoy – my, my routine's not so much a – it's not meant to be so much of a teaching thing because at the end of the day, we're just kind of riding bikes. So it's, it's more of a training day that covers, that goes over, you know, my experiences in the last 25 years and how I can relate things to make it easier to learn. Um, but realistically, it, it, my, my clinic is, is a lot more of like a training day. Um, and I think the parents really like that and really relate to it. Um, they just enjoy their kid. Um, you know, seeing their kid out there putting out full efforts and instead of, you know, whenever most parents take their kid to the track, and I was guilty of it too, just going out there, popping a few gates off to the first jump, but then hanging out with your buddies and, you know, doing whips. Um, but, you know, that, get, that shit gets old to parents who are, you know, paying money for their kids to, you know, hopefully get better or take it somewhere. And um, and I think that's, so, I mean, I, I'm not going to, I'm not, I don't have, or I'm not going to sell that my clinics change and come check out the new and improved routine. It's a, uh, I think my routine is, is kind of tried and true and it, it works really good for, you know, from five year old novices to 50 year old women and men up in the gate. Um, so the routine's the same. Uh, we're going to be hitting a few new tracks, a couple different areas. Um, we're not going to have as big of a tour up in the Northeast yet this year, unfortunately. And fortunately, just cause I really hate driving up in the Northeast. Um, as far as I don't remember what other questions you had, but we'll probably good. have some well, I've... special popping in here and there. I know Ethan likes to jump in the on the rig with us from time to time between races. He'll uh, 
He'll probably be at the DeSoto Clinic after this Houston National. So if anybody's listening and wants to come check out Ethan, demonstrate a few things, he'll be out there with me. Well, um, I have a question. It's two parts. One, yeah. one does Ethan uh, stand in for you when you have to do push-ups for the kids? And two, have you kept track of how many push-ups you've had to do? Uh, nobody ever <laughs> stands in. I, I always pay my debt to the kids because <laughs> I expect them to pay me on site. So, But he, he does get in and, and do the push-ups from time to time. Right but on. we got we to keep those arms fresh. He's got some races to win this year. All right. And how many think you, how many second, think you've done? I should. I haven't. I have thought about it because it would be kind of funny. Um, I know during the summer camp last year, I one day I had to do over two hundred and fifty or three hundred push-ups, like just throughout the three-hour training session. Well, to just have just have Lindsay add one more column to the sheet. <laughs> you know, push-ups. Know. Nick, Nick, I'm not, push I'm, I'm not a collector. So I throw those sheets away immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I right. live in a motorhome and I got to travel all my way. Yeah, right. <laughs> he goes, all right, we're going to, we're going to slide over. We're going to hand it over to Melissa for our first chat check-in. And it's brought to you by BMX Rock Photography. If you guys are looking for the best in BMX racing pictures, make sure you guys check out BMX Rock Photography. Melissa, how is the chat room looking this evening? Busy, busy. Uh, got, uh, couple of uh, responses to your chat question too that I'll read as I go along. So I want to say uh, hi and shout out to Sean Gifford, Brett Donovan, Robert Cardoza, Rick Carter. All those guys are tuning in tonight. Greg Page, Damon Tucson's with us. Um, Chris Beers tuning in, prepping for his birthday shout outs later, I'm sure. Um, let me just make sure I'm not missing any. Do, 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 do. Low and slow is over on YouTube. Tuning in. Um, he says, I'll gladly take 50 or 60 degree weather over the couple feet of snow they should have. Um, DeSoto BMX tuning in tonight. Um, looks like they're maybe running. Oh, they, they gave us some heads up here. Let me read this. Nick Valencia tuned in. Um, De so DeSoto BMX, they run their belt series opens. That's some of what they do to kind of entice people. Um, Mike Miller's with us. He says, when I first started announcing at Cutting Edge in Ontario, Nick and his sister Shelby used to come race there. I think he was maybe around 14 or 15. Yeah, maybe we blast can. from the past. Uh, DeSoto says they give out cool awards, like $5 for the opens, I think is what that means. Um, Nick also tuned in. He says, I run JNR gift card opens, and uh, that's always drummed up a ton of interest. $5 to enter the open, and you can win a $25 JNR gift card. So that kind of is a great idea. Um, let's see. Dinah O'Brien says, One thing the track did when I was on board in New Jersey was beginner nights only. So there was no, in no intimidation from the expert riders. Uh, she's tuning in. Roxanne Collins is also with us. She says, hello, ATV fam and Nick. Martin Kennard's tuning in. Carl Stahl is with us. Uh, Josh Blair says, what's up, ATV fam? Hi, Nick and Lindsay. Um, looks like Paul Remington's in the chat. Tony Stillinger. James <coughs> Page says, what's up, guys? I'll see you guys tomorrow in Houston. Craig Robinson is tuning in. Let's see, where am I at here? Uh, Jesus Morales BMX um, is with us. Who else am I missing? David Dortona says he always has to do a lot of push-ups at Nick's trainings. <laughs> <laughs> um, Got to pay the piper. Got to pay the piper. Maybe. David uh, Blower's with us. Matt Boshin is tuning in from Australia, probably on his lunch break or breakfast, maybe. Can't remember. Uh, Jim Bosco says he's been a while, but hi. Um, let's see. Paul B3 over on YouTube says Parker says, What's up, Nick? See you soon in Florida. Uh, a couple more here. Ray Gomez says, hello, Nick, Brian, Jason, and Melissa from uh, Ramen Noodles. 
Nick, can you please come down to Okahili sometime? Is the request. <laughs> um, John Pringle says, what's up? And lastly, for this round, I have Mr. William Prince tuning in over on YouTube. Says, what up, kiddos? So thanks, guys. If anybody's got a question for Nick or something they want to ask or comment on, don't hesitate to put that in the chat. Awesome. All right. And thank you, Melissa. We appreciate it for our chat check-in, as always. And uh, we are back, and we're hanging out. Nick, we've got some more questions for you. Are you ready? Fire them off. All right. All right, so you got a new role now since the last time you were on the show. You are now Haro team manager. How are things going for you? Um, it's been it's been super awesome, honestly. Um, I wasn't, you know, last year I had, you know, as much freedom as I wanted, and and that was cool. But I, I really felt like there was something missing, and um, I don't know. I I kind of missed being with Haro the whole time. Um, it was kind of I don't really, you know, hindsight 2020, I guess. I, I wish I wouldn't have left Haro um, when I did. Um, it would have been cool to just kind of naturally grow into this um, instead of being called off the bench, basically. Um, but no, I, it, it's a, it's an awesome opportunity. It's kind of, you know, it was, it started off with being just kind of the guy to bring the pits around. Um, and then it, we kind of morphed it into being TM and, you know, we, we built up the amateur team a little bit and um, I, I don't know, I'm just stoked on it. Um, it's cool to have a little bit of responsibility at the races, um, a group of riders that, you know, that I'm kind of looking after and, and trying to do the best I can um, as a team manager. Um, you know, I had some great team managers when I was growing up with uh, my dad being there most of the time. And then DB, he did a, he did a really good job for, for myself and, you know, the other riders on the Haro team. Um, all of us would have his back any day. So I just kind of, you know, want to be, want to be that person to some of these guys and, um, you know, just kind of bring Haro back to the, uh, that glory that we all know, know it as. You know, everybody, you know, I get stopped at gas stations if they see a Haro sticker, everybody mm -hmm. wants to talk to me about it. So um, it's just one of those iconic bands that it's cool to be associated with. And um, given the responsibility, I think I can do a good job with with what I have to do for these riders and, and the company and the brand overall. Well, it's, I think it's cool that, like, you've got that well – well of knowledge that you can pull from well like with db with your dad you know it's like both you know good team managers that can you know they've brought a lot of knowledge to you and now you can yeah. apply now you can apply it moving forward i mean you've always been that guy that wanted to hang out with you know was not afraid to hang out with with the kids quote unquote the kids you know yeah. you know and that was always like the the coolest factor you know, behind you is like, you know, those guys could go talk to you. You talk to them like, like you're talking to your buddy, you know, and, and that I'm sure transfers over, you know, and those kids get a lot out of it for sure. Yeah. And I, I just enjoy building the relationships um, and, and seeing the talent in the riders is, is really cool too. kind of following their journey. Um, so that, that's kind of a part I wasn't, you know, really, anticipating but it's it's become a really cool thing just kind of following following along and you know trying to be there to help where i can hey you might you might find someone out there that nobody's seen before that's how that's how i found mike aiken he was a really? k kid from salt lake city jumping in fuzzy's backyard that went super high and i was just like who is that kid oh it's just mikey well got hey mikey you want to ride for bully yeah sure okay <laughs> and let's let's send you to some contests and see what happens and and there you go that's a, that's a pretty good origin story. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty pretty awesome. Why are you grilling me? You, you, no, I know who, but you have that question right here. This would that I wanted you to ask. Uh, <laughs> so how many times a year? What? You put you put it in the you you literally put. I it did in. highlight it, didn't I? Yeah, you did. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! I wasn't prepared. How many times a year, even though you haven't done it? Oh you <laughs> literally typed. I don't know. I can't remember typing it. You literally typed this in. Dude, I have worked so many hours in the past 24 hours that I do not remember typing that question in. <laughs> All right. Why don't you go for it? I, I, I couldn't get it. Like, I didn't. I don't get it either. I, I'm reading it. I don't get it. <laughs> hey. 
So in other news, Bill Prince just <laughs> randomly wanted me to let you know from 1997 to 2000, he thinks he was the team manager for Haro. Was he? Yeah. Was he? Oh, it was, so it, he, was the, it was the East Coast, but they did both sides. Did he? Okay, so they he didn't was. do a, they they didn't do full both sides, but he did East Coast, and then Tony D did West Coast. Okay, all right, fair enough. Moving on, um, Nick, what's uh, what's new for twenty uh, twenty three for Haro? What do, what what are we going to see uh, as far as BMX racing? Um, I mean, my main goal is. Uh, my main goal is to just kind of get more riders on the bikes, get people stoked on the brand again. Um, I think we're doing a pretty good job. We've got a couple tracks already ordering like fleets of bikes for their, you know, complete their donor bikes and stuff like that. And I think that's just a good start getting it back out there. Um, there's been a handful of years that, you know, you wouldn't, you'd see a couple elites or a pros on the carbon bikes, but you know, besides that, you didn't really see much. So, I mean, that's kind of my goal in the sense of the brand just trying to get it back out there i can't promise we're getting any new parts any, like this year um we just got a new colorway the mm -hmm. new colorways finally came out um those should be available soon in the next couple weeks i believe mm -hmm. um but i mean like i said i'm just trying to get the brand back out there that i feel like we've kind of been you know not forgotten but missed a bit um there was no presence at a lot of the races for a, you know a lot of years i kind of did uh faux team manager back in like 2015 and even 16 maybe a little bit where i was i was racing full-time and doing well at the time but also driving the haro truck and trailer and mm -hmm. setting up the where just because i hated being there with you know where i'm camping out in my minivan that i rented right. uh, so it, it's just kind of the part of bmx that when you're i don't know we kind of grew up always having pit space like that and then when it was kind of taken away i, I didn't want to have that for these riders. So that was my main goal was when our, when I got hired, it was to bring the pits up around. And so I'm, I'm being at every pro race for sure. And then is a couple of the amateur races in between, um, just to be present for the, for the brand and then for the riders too, for the riders on the team. So I got to tell you this, I see tons of Haro presence here in Florida. You've got a, a Florida Haro team here, man. They're, yeah. they're, they're doing, I they're killing it here. Like I see their hats, their jerseys. Typically, I got to chase them around the track. Uh, they're doing a great <laughs> job, man. They're doing a great job here. So kudos to the uh, Haro Florida team. And uh, I got to give shout outs where they're due. Um, and I got another question, quick question for you. Are you guys going to come out with a Chromali race frame? This is from uh, my buddy Austin up in Michigan. Um, you know, I sh absolutely would love to. And get back myself riding on a Haro, but I'm, I'm not going to build up, you know, the SD frame that has like a 21 top tube and 13 and a half inch rear end. Mm -hmm. um, but, and there was talks about it, you know, but I don't really want to bite off a project and start something new when there's other areas that we could really um, make better. Um, instead of, I mean, yes, I would love to have a curl Molly race frame. Um, and there have been talks about getting one at some point, but I don't want to promise it anytime soon. Fair enough. All right. Okay. Fell. What's up? Did you suddenly remember your question? No. Yeah. I figured it out. I, I, I left a few words out. It was encrypted. Yeah. No. It was. It was definitely sort of. This encrypted. is why when you type something, you have to speak it. I. I. I guess so. No. I, I guess I, so. Well, I'm gonna. I, but I'm gonna change it up anyway a little bit. I'm gonna share this with you right now, Rick. Uh. Uh. uh not Maserati, Rick but Miata Rick Carter from okay. the Beer Budget Show, he sent me some questions earlier. I had to read them, then decipher them, type them, then read them out because I was like, oh, I, I've, evidently he's like a 19-pack of Coors when he sent this question to me. Right. So read, <laughs> then type, then read. Well, Knock it out. Take it away. I don't know where I, don't know where I was when I wrote this, but <laughs> I was clearly not on the same plane. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway... The gist of it is, it's not like you can go like team. It's like team managers. A lot of team managers hear the, you know, well, you don't know. You've never been there. You don't. You've never done it. But yeah. they can't say that to you because you've been there on every level, you know. So, that, like it's hard. at the training center when we were when we were trying to teach to get kids to get through the second straight. You know, just air bridge it out. Just air bridge it out. Don't try to stay low. Don't try to racer it. Then they try to stay low. They come up short and they tag like the third one and they're done. 
And then yeah. we got Barry to come out there, or you to come out there. I don't remember which one of you came out. Said the exact same. No, no, who it was? It was Mike Day. Mike, we got Mike Day to come out and say the exact same shit we said to them. And next mm-hmm. thing you know, they're all just they're all just getting through the straightaway. And I'm just like, you little assholes. I'm. The, we said the exact same thing to you, and you didn't listen. And, but then Mike Day says it, and it's like, you know. Mike Day said it. I can do it, you know. So yeah, I totally get it because, like, back in the day, my dad would tell me to do something, and I'd be like, "Yeah, Dad, whatever. You don't know." And and, and, that, <laughs> and that happens to every single dad out there. I don't uh-huh. care. I don't care who you are. You're telling your kid how to do something, and how many dads have gone to somebody else and say, "Hey, do me a favor. Go tell my kid he can jump that double." Oh, no, for you sure, know? dude. So, so you've got that leverage that you can be like, "All right, you want me to go do it and show you." Cause, yeah. Because I'll do that if we need to do that. And you mean in his, t- as a t- team as manager? A, as a team manager, as he's going to tell that to his riders. Yeah, uh, all of them. No, he can. The but, whole, the, all of them. You know, he's the, got all, that clout. But, but it's all around. It's the clinics. It's the TM. It's you know, it's the okay. track director asking them how a track should be designed. You know what? In what capacity could you ask him a question and he couldn't give you an educated answer? I don't think there's any. I don't think there's so, any. But, uh, What's the but, actual question? It just kind of sounds like you're tooting my horn right now. Well, I, no, the, que- the, the question. Thank you. It's not really a question. It was. It's just the fact that I think it's really cool that you can, that nobody's going to say, to argue with you. Basically, no one's going ar- to. No one's going to argue I, I mean, on your team. I hope. I. I, I hope people do because I, I don't claim to know everything, and I. I don't know every situation. Yeah, I've been through, you know, some some shit and and a, and a lot of racing experiences, but I don't claim to know everything. So I mean, I'm I'm happy to be the person that listens and and takes it in as well and, and just keeps an eye on things. I know my, my dad's always just been the best at watching everybody and I, I can pride, kind of pride myself in doing that as well. So I, I don't, I don't like to say I'm a coach. Um, I mean, I could be the coach of the clinics that I put on, but I've never, I would never like to say I'm like a high performance coach. I, Cause I, I like to think I'm still learning a lot of the time. Yeah. You're just learning on how to translate it. Yeah. Like I, I can sell my stories and, and my experiences, but, you know, it's they're not always going to be the same at the end of the day. So I'm I'm happy to learn and listen to whether if Ethan needs some help out there and I got a point of view and I can share it and that helps him. That's kind of that's what I'm there for. Screw, screw that. E-pop. Do what I tell you. You're out of here. <laughs> All right. I got a quick I, I got a question right now. Out of everyone that's right now that Nick is overseeing on the Haro team, who is going to win in an arm wrestling contest? Rue. <laughs> hmm. That's not where my money would have went. I don't know the roster, but I can tell you I'm stoked to see some females on it. A lot of females on that roster. Okay. I All think right. it's. I think that's cool. I've been a guy who's always had a, a female on my program, no matter what. Right. And I'd like to see that. Cool. So what's <laughs> what? <laughs> What are you looking at me for? <laughs> Why are you looking at me like I'm doing something? I swear to God. Do, do you got another question that doesn't have a question in it for Nick? I, I don't see. I don't. I don't see my. I don't. What's see the my, one above that one right there? It's pretty. Or with that tied in, we kind of talked to all about all that. You tied that into the second one. Yes. All right. Fair it's enough. Called, it's called working on the fly. Oh, we do that every show. Every show. Holy shit, do we do that? Um, are you some guys more, some more than others? <laughs> uh, are you, uh, what nationals do you guys plan on being at, Nick? So we'll be at every pro race national, uh, every pro series one. So mm-hmm. I mean, we go from Houston to Oldsmar, float around Florida for a little bit, do Rock Hill. Um, we kind of float around like the I don't know mid, not Midwest, a little lower like Arkansas. I know True. we got one in. Cabot, Arkansas. Is that Arkansas? I think. Um, and then we get for the Tulsa National, the Nashville National. Um, shoot, I don't know. I know the – so we'll be at all the pro races, and then the non-pro races will be at uh, Colorado one in Grand Junction and the Minnesota one at the Crow – is it Crow River, the old SCMA track? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, I think that's about it for the now. And then trying to get to some fun events in between the, the Richmond flat pedal race. I'm really trying to get to 
Um, I really wish I was in the area to do that TRA flat pedal race, but just line up with the races I got to be at. That TR race, TRA race is fire, man. It looks fun. I, I'm pretty sure uh, Vic would pass on the track, but it just looks like yeah. a good time. It's, man, I I want to get out there. My buddy Joe, he's always there. Doherty, he's from the BMX Under Blood podcast show. He's always out there uh, doing his podcast from there, and that race is something else. And if you guys don't know, uh, make sure you check out uh, uh, it's it's Trail Riders Association. Uh, check it out. They they put on a it's a side by side race. It's a downhill BMX race. It's fire. It's super cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nick, I think you dominate in it. I don't know if I would dominate. I can't claim that, but it would just would be fun to like. I mean, I'm not a very good dirt jumper. I don't jump very high even when I go do trails. So mm-hmm. I could the hell out of some dirt jumps, which I I feel like I might do all right. I'd put, I'd put, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd put, uh, I'd put twenty five hundred dollars of Brian Wilson's money on it <laughs> that you would beat Vic Bem. Oh, don't start this. He's oh, gonna start he's start gonna the fire. Shit I, I hate talking shit. I I will because it's not my money. We'll, um, make a, we'll make a we'll make a logo for it tomorrow. <laughs> I, hey, didn't Vic duck uh, KJ on a race? Did he? Yeah, he ducked uh, KJ. Hey, to KJ race. KJ's watching right now. Yeah, because KJ KJ challenged to race him somewhere, and then and then Vic Vic ducked him oh, Lord. and was like, "Nah, nah, I don't want to race him. Let's get this whole thing started." A three man? Talking about a three man? No, 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 no. We're just gonna get Nick. We're gonna Cage toss. Match? We're gonna toss Nick into this thing and do the whole thing. Like. I got no shit to talk about. Uh, Trust me. Vic, I, I enjoy having conversations with him. No, he's person. a great guy. We talk to each other online, but I, yeah, yeah. He, he's a good I, person to check when I see him. No, wrote, I, wrote with him at Ray's. Awesome cat, man. Him and his crew, good dudes. Um, yeah. Great guys. Uh, I, I get along with them as well, just to verify that. <laughs> yeah, but there's nothing wrong with talking shit, man. That's how no, you get, no, I don't. I don't you really get, talk shit. You got to get numbers up somewhere. I, I like to talk shit a little bit, but like not to, not to like – anger somebody well i don't want to get shot either i don't want to get shot i, I, I like i like him i like see, i like i like it when he stops by the tent for five seconds and says what's up and peels <laughs> knives hurt uh i got some race questions for you are you ready yeah give it to me those are my favorite. all right what are your thoughts all right so just for the record uh there was some help on these questions um and they did come in from not maserati rick they came in from miata rick carter uh out of the beer budget show. What are your thoughts on the current state of the pro series, not having a title sponsor? Um, hang on, hang on. We've got to hit record. It's already yeah. recorded. Yeah. See, it's, see the, the second, current, I mean, I see know, the second blue who, light. Just making know, sure. I, what happened? No, just, go ahead. Just making sure we're hitting record to hear what you say. Go ahead. I, I don't, I mean, I, it's not something I honestly even thought about. Um, I don't know whose job it is to seek those out or if they're, you know, succeeding or failing at it. If there's no title sponsor, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure at the end of the day, everybody always complains that they don't get paid enough. So, uh, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I guess that's kind of why I'm doing the duffel bag dash the best I can. It's funny. Cause that kind of leads into the next part of this question that, uh, I added my, uh, my own into. So besides your duffel bag dash, <clears throat> how, how how can in this it doesn't necessarily have to be just sanction based like it can be you know outside of the sanction it can be you know what can a live stream show a podcast show do or somebody that makes tents it doesn't matter uh what how can the, how can the pro purses get bigger i don't know i mean i mean i imagine you guys could make up your own big ass checks and walk over to whoever wins the race and give them 250 bucks yourselves. Anybody could imagine do that. I mean, that would probably be a pretty cool thing to happen for the pros. You know, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be through me like, at the end of the day. It's just, we enjoy watching those racers do well and, you know, put their hearts out on the field and, uh, and to get paid doing that is, it, it's kind of the goal for all of us or, you know, was my goal at the time. It was their goal it's, it is mm-hmm. their goal. So I mean, it's real, realistically, anybody could do that. You don't have to fucking come up with a big check. That's just I just like to make a show of it because that's what the riders kind of like. If I was winning races still, I'd be stoked to be throwing out cash like that was just a, a right. cool thing. And I don't know if it was 
watching those guys live through me. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I think any, like I said, if you want to, if you want to see the pays, the pays, the pros get paid more. It's it's as simple as either raising funds like I'm trying to do or walking up and giving them money. I mean, it it, it sounds silly, but I mean that realistically, that's what anybody could do. I th- I think it's the same old disconnect. It's the same old thing. There's a disconnect. Where? Between the pros and the organizations. The pros in the state series, the pros in the national series, the pros in the World Cups. There, there's a disconnect. There's no there's no symbiotic relationship where one is helping the other one. No, there isn't one. You know, and, and that's it's it's the same old story. We talk about the same thing. You know, I mean it's it's what the sanction body doesn't ask the pros really to do much unless you're part of that the USA BMX Foundation. They go and do like Posey does school tours or whatever, and you know all, whoever is in, right. involved in that. But other than that, we don't. Do, they don't do anything. You know, like like is is USA BMX actively besides during the Olympic time helping getting our riders on? But Good Morning America or or something in that area compared to what though? Motocross. Okay, so you you you've got a litmus level that's really high. Okay, because like <laughs> fucking what's motor. A, what's, a, what's a litmus level? Litmus level is like a high water mark. Okay, because like you have to like, let's be honest. Like, God love USA BMX, but that's like a two and a half million dollar, three million dollar a year organization. What's motocross? What really like? What's AMA? It's what's all relative. Fit? No, it isn't. Because you, how are you going to tell somebody? That that that's getting a check for uh, and please correct me if I'm wrong because I'm ignorance is bliss. But you're winning like twenty five hundred dollars a race and BMX. But like the dude that takes thirty second wins like eight grand in a motocross race. I don't and think it's that. I don't think it's that high. Cordoza, I, get the list on the screen. Cordoza, look. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> like, I understand what you're where you're going because, like, th- those motocross racers have media obligations they have to show up they have to film they got all these things to do this is bmx they have to pay for their own flights okay it's not like it's not like but okay, we're not talking well, about the same thing okay but like take the top one percent the top one percent in bmx is what uh uh and, and nick please jump in with me the top one percent of 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 elite racers right now is who top one percent of the elites of the elites right now who is it uh, Elise, I mean, how would you say that? Elise Kinman and Corbin, maybe okay. on that list of one percenters. Carlos, okay, now because he's fresh in my head. From stop, the new stop right there. Ride. Can any of those riders afford Eli Tomac's goddamn motorhome? <laughs> no, they can't. <laughs> Carlos, and I'm not Carlos to, can, but it's I'm in not Believers. Be, I'm not trying to be an asshole, but I'm literally saying they can't afford the gas that goes in that motorhome. So, like, to say okay, that there's and the, these restrictions that you want to put on them, for them to show up and do that, it's different. It's and different. And dude. guess what? They're never going to fucking have the gas money to get to get in I there. I agree. You, something's got to come first. I you agree. got You got to put yourself out there. And, and there's got to be a somebody. Yeah. I mean, I don't care if you go to a Daytona state race and you get one news station to come out there and do an interview about your track and they're going to air it at, at five and 11. You can't tell me that's not good for that local program. Even one station, any national, any, na- well, all right, let's now let's times it by the national. Let's times it by the state races all across the country. Every state has them. Every, the, every state has SCRs. So try to get some news media out. If every track, every qualifier, every event just had one news station, how mm-hmm. much more sport awareness are we creating? I, I I agree with it all, but I'm just saying it's a different playing field. Okay, but who you get, who who do you want this news station if they do come out? Who do you want them talking to? And this is no offense to any track director's 11 year old kid, but. I want to talk. I don't to want pros. to talk to the eleven-year-old kid. I want to talk to the pro. I want. I, want, to, I want to be. I'm fortunate enough to have an a, a, a elite guy in my realm. Hey, come on out and, right. and talk to us. You know, and and that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. People have to. It's got to be symbiotic. They got to be willing to work with each other. And right now, there's not even a game plan to work with each other. But it's really hard when you have the current state in. But the next thing I'm going to say, I am going to get fire. 
It's Ooh. really hard when the current state of BMX has a bigger payout from a vet pro than it does from the sanction itself. That is rough. I don't know hey, what you mean. It's from the people. It's from the people. You're correct, Nick. Thank you. I don't know what you're talking about. Right now, the payout for the pros is bigger from the people in the sport than it is from the sanctioning body. So when you compare it to motocross, motocross is paying out like gobs of money because it has all this sponsorship money. Okay. But like what Nick's, Nick's capitalized on is Nick has brought in all this money from these people that support the sport. Right. 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 So it's hard to compare. And this is not a knock. First of all, I want to clarify. This is not a knock at our sanction. Oh, are you talking about the grands? Yes. Okay. Duff, okay. Yeah. I'm just talking about okay. next yeah. week. But I, I mean, I'm speaking overall is it's hard to compare it to what you want to compare it to because you've got like once a year, big payout and you want it to month and month over month with motocross has more money coming in from outside sponsorships. We don't have that. And then Nick's been able to capitalize on bringing money in <clears throat> from the people themselves. And again, let me clarify, not knocking our, our sanction because our sanction does a great job, but we don't have outside money coming in. All right. Well, how? Well, this leads us in the que- the question to Nick was, how can we bring in outside sponsors? You're but right. Now we're leading into this, and this is this is another whole show in its own. No. Well, I, I'll I'll just summarize it real quick. We see the same people race after race. The, the nationals are the same people race after race. Yeah. We're seeing the same audience event after event. And, after and you know event. what? Nick's done a great job of figuring out a way to get that audience to help to support our pros. Well, I think if anybody's going to spend Brian Wilson's money, we should spend it on <laughs> that documentary, <laughs> just like they do on, on the, the F one series. They're doing one for Supercross Now or for motocross. <laughs> I think we should be Look, on top of that. I got 2,500 bucks of Wilson's money against Nick and, and Vic Bem right now. Okay. <laughs> well, we're, I got another 25,000 on this project. You so. got to, you, you he better get his ass to the poker table <laughs> and start winning some money because we got projects. I think he's, here. I think he's in the parking lot. I do have a good question in the chat. All right. We're going to switch it up. Are, you, are we, are Go we good? for it. Do it. Uh, wait, listen, let's do a couple more questions. A little less debate. I'm not a fan of debating. Well, that's just this, this thing just suddenly turned into like a shit show <laughs> ESPN morning show debate. I don't know if I turned into I, I don't know what happened here. I don't know who I am. I don't watch those. I don't watch it either. Away from sharing opinions. Yeah, it was I don't like to watch people argue. I just, and I thought, I didn't think we were arguing. I thought we were just making points. Well, we were. Go ahead, Nick. Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a question, Nick. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Um, this comes from Craig Michael. He's been around for, for a long time. You want to take it, <laughs> Melissa? Yes, please. All I'd right. like to say something. Take it. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm over here biting at the, the bit to ask this. Um, all right. It seems, <laughs> so Craig's asking, it seems that the former pros liked and talked about the Pro Cruiser class from many years ago. Do you feel, Nick, that there's a place for a Pro Cruiser class in the near future? And do you know if the pros of today have any interest in it or will it complicate things for the riders who might be going in World Cup direction or Summer Olympics? <laughs> I don't know if I'm the best person to answer this question because in my, I hate cruisers. Um, mm-hmm. I think <laughs> I I would watching Pro Cruiser. The the coolest thing about Pro Cruiser is the crash in Cruiser Elite Main at the uh, South Africa Worlds. That's the coolest cruiser race I could ever think of. Was that the front yeah. flip? I, I yeah, everybody crashed in one jump in the pro jump. It was like fireworks went off. Yeah, I just. I, I'm not a fan of cruisers. Um, I think cruisers should kind of be left for, uh, you know, parents over 35 or whatever. Um, having the, I mean, I just imagine it when I was a kid, my dad was toting around fucking five, six bikes flying to races, like, or, you know, and then having us not ever ride the cruiser till nationals, um, ended up being better on my cruiser, getting smoked and clapped. Like, it's just, it kind of sucks. Like when you, I mean, I, I'm not trying to knock anybody who races cruiser, but I realistically, like if, if you're, if you only like rice and cruiser and you're only doing good on cruiser, it's probably because you're getting smoked on 20 inch and then your cruiser class is a little bit easier. Um, 
I mean, sorry, not sorry, but I, I, Cruiser's a, a little bit lame, in my opinion, for that sense. I, I feel like BMX is the 20 inch class. If, if I the, if I remember, but, you you were so then, psyched. Like the older like older riders, like it's kind of a cru- it's a cruiser. It's a easy, I don't know, a little bit easier bike to ride. Uh, it, I don't know. I, it. If I if I remember you correct, you were so psyched when you got to move into the 16 and over open. Where do I am I remember that right? I mean, I know I for because I only raced like maybe three NBL races ever. I so I barely got to race. I really only raced NBL for the junior class. I well, I remember you in Pittsburgh. Yeah, so I did one season after I won the ABA title in 2007. I raced the 2008 NBL season as amateur because my dad really wanted to beat. Uh, Terry at the dance comp team. <laughs> well, I just remember <laughs> all my all my pit chairs were taken up by Phantom on track kids. Yeah, <laughs> yo, I mean, we, my dad would he we just brought like five people to each race and and just wanted to beat Terry. That was my own, dad's only goal. That's so funny. Terry, I don't know if you know who Terry Sonner is Melissa. She was a dance mm-hmm. team manager for many years. Kind of, kind of famous for bringing in the the South American riders. The first team manager to bring in the South American riders. Gotcha. No, I didn't know about that. We, we wanted to check all the IDs and birth certificates of everybody. <laughs> Augusto <laughs> Castro was like fourteen on the moto sheet, and he was like fully shaven and before the race, and <laughs> it was it was it was a little sus back in the day. Yeah, I guess I've heard some of that rumor. Melissa, were there any other questions? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, Paul over on YouTube wants to know what Nick's views on the OS20 are then. I don't have much of a view on it. I've never really tried it. I jumped on one and um, just like we were doing sprints in Jake Peebles house and his buddy now being a bad friend and i can't remember his name um but he rides a, a, a os20 and the other thing i thought about i never rode on the track but the gearing felt funny like i don't know what kind of gearing you run on it it's it's like a weird size like a 38 18 or something it's weird um but i, yeah, I don't have much view on it they kind of look funny when you see like a shorter person on one um <laughs> but yeah I, I mean i don't have a, a a viable um opinion on it all right Anything else, Melissa? No. Okay. Are we good for the uh, lightning round? Yeah, I think so. I, Wait, are you? Uh, there was one other question in the um, script. Are you moving over? Thank you. Oh, all right, Nick. Yeah, um, I, wait, I have one more question. <laughs> you have one? Yeah. Well, well Bill, Bill Prince texted me, and I, I texted it to Melissa, but I don't think she saw it. This but, it's, here's uh, the thing: I got to explain. Like, you have to understand. We have how many monitors are in front of us? Six. One, There's two, so three, much going four, on. Four, five. <laughs> Stop yeah. texting us. We can't see yeah. this shit. Okay. Like there are six monitors in front of us, two cell phones, and a tablet. If you honestly think I'm going to read any of that, like, think okay, text him. That's fine. But well, you got too much to do over there. When you when we when we cut the screen, I check my phone sometimes. Okay. So. All right. But it's because of stuff like this. But what Prin- did Bill have to ask? Prince wants to know. Was this some more shit about pump tracks and just get off my lawn? No, no, no. Okay. It's not really get off my lawn or anything. It's just kind of good question. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm pretty. Well, I stopped it. I tried to give it. All right, take it away. But he wants to know how many of your tattoos are BMX related. That's a damn good question, Bill Prince. He came. He comes every once every once out of a hundred. Bill Prince he gets, gets one. You get to ride shotgun up to Tampa on Friday. <laughs> He won't. He'll ride in the back. Very How many cute. tattoos are BMX related? I really don't have that many, but I guess I could say I have a couple. Um, mm-hmm. My, I have, I, I'm not on screen, but I have the words who wants it across my wrist. And that was just, a, we started saying it when I was training for 2016. Um, a kid, Mattia, we called him Pablo. He's an Italian writer. That's 
um, stay strong rider. We, whenever we were doing gates in the backyard, we'd just be talking shit and, you know, come around the corner and be like, who fucking wants it? And so it just <laughs> kind of came off. Um, so that was kind of one. I got a, a lucky rabbit's foot, like a kind of neo-traditional lucky rabbit's foot on my inner right bicep with a, like a toe tag, basically with the number 88 on it for Kyle. Um, I have my, yeah, I have a Brazil tattoo on my thigh. It's just kind of like a, the outline of the country shape with like the, with like a torch. And, um, so that's like my Rio tattoo. And then both of my feet are like my London themed tattoos. So I have, um, basically like a queen figure for like the queen of England, uh, big Ben and a knight's helmet on there. And then I have like, so I have the Olympic rings and like the filigree on the top of my foot. Cool. Right. I think, yeah, really. How, how many tattoos are done by Tish? Most probably about 70, 75%. If I was going to get a tattoo, that's the guy that would do it. Is it? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. If you, if you ever see his work, it's it's amazing. Oh, I I have, yeah, pretty pretty good <laughs> stuff. So we do have this other question. It was mailed. Yeah, in. That it was weird. Are you, it sounds like you got some bad news to tell me or something. No, I, I don't. <laughs> it's it's um, it's like when you wear a turtleneck shirt that's like too tight. All right. So since calling out coffee chatter during your gold crank award speech, have th- yeah. how have things been with uh, James and Tori? Um, I don't know. I guess probably a little rocky. We don't, I, we don't uh, chat as much as we used to. Yeah. Um, I thought I, I thought I cleared it up with James at Grands. We had a good conversation at the Max. Um, yeah. And I mean, I we we said both sides of our story. Um, I hadn't talked to Tori much. Um, but I saw him at Lauren Reynolds' wedding last or a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were cordial and everything. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't have any bad feelings about it. I, just, I, I, I was hope my intention saying that was. I got the idea for that project from them, and I, with you know, potentially with more of their help sharing it through their their platform, we could have raised more money. And that was the only reason I ever said anything. Yeah, yeah. There that's... was no hard feeling. Like I, I, I love James and Tori. I've, Sure. Been friends with for a long time. I've known Tori since he was whatever, 10, 11, 12 years old. James, since he was a junior or so. Um, yeah, no, we've hung, we've spent plenty of time together. So I hope I hope that's not the end of an era. But, uh, you know, if they were upset about that comment, so be it. I don't take it back. We'll still share it. <laughs> we ain't got that reach, but we'll still share it. All right. You're the sponsor of Lightning Round. You want to do the you're intro? You're going to make me read my own promo. Again. Read your own promo. <sighs> the mission of branded pop-ups is to provide any fan or brand supporter with the opportunity to purchase a branded pop-up style canopy of their favorite company. Did What's... you know, Justin, that you don't have to get a top, a frame, and a bag. You can get just the top. I don't have to get all of it. You don't have to get all of it. You could have you have some some frame. Everybody's got a frame in their garage, right? I don't have to buy the frame and the bag and the top. No, you don't. I can just buy one of them. Only one. You could That's buy amazing. ten. You could buy just the top. You could hell. You could buy the frame if you want to. No problems. <laughs> all right. <laughs> but get on branded pop ups right now and check it out. So we've got about 15, 16 brands on there. And summer's coming. Spring, spring is coming. The sun's going to come out somewhere, and you know you're going to need it. So spring, might as well get on it now. Spring break's coming. You're going to need it there at uh, Old Fort Myers or Fort Lauderdale Beach. Fort Lauderdale Beach, come on down. We, we expect you. <laughs> you know you like it. It was. Like, where where can they go to order it? I said on brandedpopups.com. Good times. Make sure you always say it twice. S- stop on by. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? <laughs> You two are like Laurel and Hardy tonight. I'm telling you. <laughs> That's what happens. That's what happens first. when you get your own time and you got 20 minutes to get ready. <laughs> That's right. All right, we ready to blast off. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah. You want the first question, Melissa? I would love to. Okay. Nick, what was the last movie you liked so much you watched it twice? My wife loves it every time I try. I try to play it every night, but The Dark Knight. 
Ooh. Um, yes. Good. I, I, don't know I don't know if it's Heath Ledger's performance or what, but I, I just – that's a, I'll put that movie on. Dude, every, I would just love to chop up that movie with all the Heath Ledger scenes and just yeah. play all the scenes together. That's, that's the best movie. You want the next one? Favorite sports team? Fuck. Uh, Phantom on track? It could be anybody. Yep, Phantom on track. <laughs> Take it. All right. Uh, one sport that you would never try. Uh, anything equestrian, I'll never ride a horse. Good answer. All right. What is one place you would like to travel to? And why? Um, actually we, Lindsay and I talked about the other day. There's a, we have, she has a friend that lives in Alaska and she might be getting married. And if we, somehow I'm able to travel up there, it would be cool to see Alaska. All right. What's the last? Why thing? I don't? Know. I mean, it's Alaska. Just, I mean, just that's... the open space kind of. Mm -hmm. Kind of, you only see it in TV shows, I guess. You know who randomly went to Alaska? Phil Deliz Phil Delizia. He used to ride for MCS. You remember Phil Delizia really? and uh, Big Phil and Prince went to Alaska. Hmm. Which is, it's, I don't know, if, it's a weird combo, if you ask me, but <laughs> randomly. Yeah, go ahead. Well, you have the next one. What was the last thing you Googled? Uh, chili ingredients. No beans. With beans. Doesn't speak <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, favorite thing you like to do on a date with your wife? Wait a minute. What the fuck? Uh, Who set me up with that question? <laughs> the fuck? Come on. I, I didn't do it. Look in the monitor, buddy. <laughs> Favorite thing? Um, Besides go to Fort Lauderdale and hang out with your friend. <laughs> shit, I don't know. I, I like to cook, so uh, I, I, I cook as often as I can. Very nice. Lindsay's starving. We'll wrap it up as quick as we can, Lindsay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> She's just laughing. All right. Uh, all right. What's the worst place on earth? Texas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. I'm not the biggest fan of Texas. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. Best place on People earth. Are great. People are great, but I just I haven't had luck in Texas. You, neither have I. Almost had many many an issue with flying through the airports there. Anyway, best place on earth. Um, the greatest place on earth, Grands. That's my favorite place. Ah, oh, good answer. Uh, favorite pizza topping. Cheese. I mean, cheese is always the base. So I, I'm a pepperoni guy. I, pepperoni onion. That's where I'm at. But I, I'll, I'm not picky. All right, we're gonna we're gonna have to call time out here. We're gonna right. have to no. tadpole. You're gonna have to quiet down in the background there. <laughs> What? She knows what I'm talking about. Shush. Oh my gosh, Melissa! Uh, favorite sport other than BMX? Um, Lindsay's looking for a pad and paper right now. Yes, I don't know. I, li <laughs> I don't know. I, I like golf or bowling. Nice. Down with golf. Best way to waste a day? Uh, I mean watching bullshit tv shows but i i lose myself to like messing around on my uh like illustrator and procreate app a lot of times nice nice oh that's cool i'm gonna add one to this one aluminum carbon or chromoly uh i mean i don't plan on writing anything but chromoly ever again and i gotta ride these or uh, i'll be on carbon wheels I'm excited about that, but now I'll never ride anything but a chrome only frame again. Yeah, boy. Uh, Nick, what's your favorite book? Um, I really like, um, yeah, Chris Fox's book series. I, I'm I'm working on his third book now, um, but it's just kind of a cool insight or insight to like kind of his mind and also just like stories of his road trips and everything. Um, and just kind of knowing him since, you know, I was nine or 10 years old. Um, it's just kind of cool being able to keep up with his story, you know, when we don't get to see each other almost ever. Sure. 
Nice. Amazing bull rider. <laughs> oh, <man>. Phenomenal. <laughs> Hands Phenomenal. down. Best guy. Yep. All right. Favorite guilty pleasure. <laughs> I said that all. all that was yeah. awkward as hell. Dude. Um, fuck. I don't know. I. I it's weird saying it like because I live in a motorhome now, but I, I like uh, like working on projects being handy all right that's not, oh guilty pleasure i get okay if i think about it like a snack uh i, I will plow some fruit roll-ups that a boy <laughs> i'm that talking i'm talking 10, 15 a night when i got them right uh, and is, is your bride right by you where she can uh get by the mic your phone She's, she, I'm, I'm, I'm in the kitchen, and she's way back in the bedroom. So, I mean, it's I, she'd have to go all the way down the hallway. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, well, she can holler. Uh, she's back. Most annoying thing about you. <laughs> like, most annoying thing about Wait, me. who's asking? Who you, who's, what's the question? Most annoying. What does Lindsay think? What does Lindsay think is the most annoying thing about you, Nick? Oh, okay, there we go. <sighs> His driving? <laughs> <laughs> That's wow, awesome. it's a long days for you, isn't it? Because <laughs> yeah. uh, I just kicked her back. She, I tell her she's out of the captain seat. She's in the bed. <laughs> All right. Kick her five because it's bumpy as hell back there. I can see that. All right, Nick, what's your favorite color? Um, I mean, I I wear a lot of black, but I I I like like olive green, like my tangent number plate color. All right. What talent do you wish you had? Um, shoot, I don't know. I mean, a better bike racer at some points would have been pretty cool. <laughs> Jesus, you've been a two-time Olympian, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I'm two-time Olympic letdown. That's how I like oh, to justify come it. On, oh, man. Oh. Uh, no, no, I, I, I give myself a hard time. I I'm, know you I'm do. We, well, we've learned, but yeah. yeah. Um, no, um, uh, Lindsay, <laughs> Lindsay, you want to step in on this? Can you juggle? <laughs> <laughs> like I picture Nick just like behind the scenes, oh, no. low key, setting up a DJ booth, and no one knows, and he's just mixing. Just going to town. Yeah, no one knows. <laughs> no, I, I, I really. He wishes he could be a better driver. No. <laughs> I, I, bet... <laughs> I wish I would have spent a little more. Took. I, I mean, it's not like I can't, but uh, just a little more artistic. Like a, a tattoo artist would be a cool job cool. at some point. So, but um, you know, I'm really enjoying what I do now. Cool. All right. All right. Uh, what's <laughs> her by the way he gets us everywhere safe she can never talk actual shit she's always gotta come i mean <laughs> the last time i saw the rv was in one piece so you know yeah it, it's holding on i got new tires on it recently look every now and then you might get a darlington stripe down the side but you know whatever uh <laughs> that's like, that's just experience experience i look <laughs> After driving in Miami with Phil, look, people get desperate, and it's all about who's going to be the last one to cut over. <laughs> oh, my God. That's everywhere in a fucking motorhome. <laughs> I, I can't even imagine, especially especially with his trailer he tows. I like, I like it when you're trying to get over, and you can't get over because they're not giving you the way. Just give them a little. Yeah. Just give them a little shake. <laughs> you know, the, the, just give them a little squirrel out. They'll, they'll get right the hell out of the way. You got the lane wide open. I don't know how they... I don't know how that works for Nick with the motorhome and the trailer, though. It's just, you just got a trailer. It, it's a quick cut. They'll get out of the way. Yeah. Well, really? Okay. Yeah. So all you get is give, just, just give them a little, just give them a little shake, and that Look. trailer, that trailer comes across, and they're they're on the brakes like no other. <laughs> Here, here's how I wouldn't f with that was I saw Nick's trailer parked there at Waterford Oaks, and then I don't remember like the next day I was cutting across 59. And I saw like Nick and the and the fam going the opposite direction, and I remember like, hey, there goes Nick and Lindsay. Holy shit, that is a big ass motorhome and a trailer. I don't want that thing shaking at me. Like it, 
Dude, even if I had some big ass pavement princess redneck truck, like I don't want that shaking at me. And it's like anything else. You get it brand new. You're all worried about it. Uh, uh, nah. Like you got to scratch it or something just to nah. get it over nah. that hump. Yeah, it's nah. like a new that helmet. Like on fire. Yeah. Or you can light it. it on fire for a minute. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> a little, that's the character. All right. We got, we got a couple more questions. You ready? Let's do it. Maybe. All right. Uh, did we ask the... I, like we were talking. You're on the hidden talent. Hidden All right. Talent. What's the one thing that people are generally surprised to find out about you? Typically, like, what's a hidden talent or something like that? Um, I was telling Lindsay today, I think it was today. I, I really, I really enjoy or are happy that I have this superpower of remembering all the kids names at the clinic i, I don't you, think i would do the clinics like huge. i do if I he does do that. that is you do huge. you do it's that's amazing. a huge point <laughs> yeah the kids love that yeah my brother trevor was that way when he was doing clinics back in the Bro. days with gt and stuff he could remember every, like 35 40 kids now by Nick, the end of the clinic their stickers gone like in the beginning like their names on their sticker and like it you, it helps you but by the end, they're gone. They sweat. They've fallen off. But you still remember those kids' names, man. It's, that's a, that is a talent. Nick has like that a, is a talent. Nick has a CEO talent at it, for real. Like a, like a fortune, <laughs> like a fortune ten CEO talent, <laughs> for real. All right, we got two more questions. Hit it. Uh, Nick, do you watch Supercross? Uh, I do watch it, but I don't follow it. Shit. Okay, this you have might... a favorite rider. Yeah, Christian Craig. He's uh he grew up racing on our team with us. Um, I stayed the night at his house plenty of times. He stayed the night at my house when we were kids. Um, we uh he also rode for Haro before I did. Um, we still keep in contact from here or here and there, but uh, um, yeah. So he's my favorite person. I check in and like to see how he does. You know, it's funny. Awesome. It's, it's so rad you said Christian Craig because I was I just watched their edit from Houston before I came here. And looking at his kid, Jagger, reminds me of him like when he was younger. Like he wasn't that young. I don't remember him that young, but I remember him a little bit older. And it's just such a flashback to see him and like the way they're growing up and stuff. And it's, yeah. so, it's so cool to see like him get out of the sport, come back and make something of, of the whole deal. So yeah. I, hope, I hope he gets it together because he's better than that, you know. Got the last one. That's mine. I guess I got it. You got better take it. All right, Nick, this is the hard one. Hit it. Your favorite Wednesday night BMX, live BMX show. It's got to be all things. All things BMX. Got to be. Got to be. All right, Nick. <laughs> uh, all right. Thank you, Nick. Um, please, if you can, stick around. Uh, we're going to do our Newsmaker segment. And uh, we'd like to have you part of our Newsmaker segment. Uh, I do understand if time constraints will not allow you to hang out with us, but if you can, it'd be more than welcome to have you hang out with us during our Newsmaker segment. And uh, are you able to hang out with us for a few more minutes? I probably shouldn't. I do okay. need to get to the showers and shit here before they close here at 9. All right, Nick, then here's what I want to do. I want to toss it over to you before we leave. And I want you to give thanks and shout outs to who you'd like to give shout outs and thanks to. Oh, this is terrible pressure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as it goes, I, I mean, I like to thanks to my wife, Lindsay, um, you know, sticking, sticking by me through this crazy journey and doing it with me alongside um, auto bikes for, you know, getting us gas money and getting us uh, on the road. Um, all the riders on the team stoked to have everybody and helping out. Um, Brian at Carbone and a pro experience, everything looking forward to my summer camp this, this year, the guys at Odyssey, Mike Gons, um, shit. I don't know. Greg at shadow, uh, Derek at 60. I don't, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> who? Who yeah. And you know, really probably mostly besides Lindsay, um, everybody who's donating and trying to, trying to help inspire the next generation to, you know, hopefully get a piece of the pie at, at the greatest race on earth. Um, yeah. So thanks to everybody else who, uh, is in, enjoying and, uh, participating in this journey. Everyone comes to the clinic? And the clinic, of course. Thank you guys. <laughs> <All> <laughs> Especially right. the guys who come more than once. Cause that's, that's cool. That means something to me. 
Hey, we're gonna put the link in for to to donate. All right, and the link for the chat or for the clinics too. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Man. Let me and to, yes, send me a message. Uh, I'm pretty good at replying most of the time. I mean, I'm sure there's people in my spam box that will attest to that, but uh, I try to be <laughs> proactive about it. Again, thank you, Nick, for joining us for Moto Two. We appreciate it. Have a good time. Good luck in Houston. Look forward to talking to you soon. All right. Yep. We'll talk to you soon. All right. You have a good Bye, guys. Time. See you guys. Thank see you. you guys later. Bye, Lindsay. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We want to thank Nick for hanging out with us this evening. It was a good time talking with him and uh, always a pleasure. We are going to move into our next segment. Newsmaker. It's brought to you by our good friends over at 110 Nutrition. You doing the 110 Nutrition thing, Brian? Absolutely. I'm down. There you go. All right. And uh, we're going to go back. Here we go. Uh, always a good time. And I'm going to go here. Got to get in the flip to this one. There it is. And it ties right back into our guest. Uh, we were talking to the captain himself this evening. And uh, he was talking about the clinics. And uh, where is he going to be, Fell? Well, February 10th through the 12th, he'll be at Houston, a Huston, Huston BMX. I don't need I don't need you after that abomination of a question that you had in the script earlier. You're correct in any of my grammar. You know I'll read whatever's put on the prompter. I he reads anything that's he on the He reads anything on the prompter. Anyway, February 10th through the 12th, he'll be at Houston BMX. February 14th, he'll be at DeSoto BMX. February 16th, he'll be at Mag Ridge BMX. And then he's going to be at Cobb County BMX on February 18th. So make sure you go over and check him out. The links will be in the chat. It's the best clinic you will ever attend. I promise you. He just reads what's on the teleprompter, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Uh, and our next bit of news comes from our good friend Pat Welch over at Waterford Oaks BMX. You guys, big things happening over there. They're grinding it out over there. Big fundraiser happening in Modern Skate and Surf in Royal Oak, Michigan. Uh, this coming Sunday, or Saturday, sorry, this coming Saturday, they've rented out Modern Skate and Surf for their annual fundraiser. Uh, Josh Long and crew from Waterford Oaks are going to have a big time, big party hanging out down there. $10 to hang out and ride modern skate and surf. It's going to be a good time. Party starts at 830. It's going to go till 1030. And rumor has it might be a Nerf gun flight. So make sure you come strapped. Look, it's kind of close to Detroit. So let me define that. Come strapped with a Nerf gun. Okay. Not leave the other thing in your goddamn glove box do one do one do one <laughs> like the die hard style oh yeah tape it to your back so you got it before you even know about it Ready. like at home tape it on there that way you can pull that dude, thing out later you, you should see laura and i's collection of nerf guns that we got back home yeah dude it's legit she's a little mm -hmm. stalker too i bet i've seen Bro, i've seen it in her eyes we got we got machine guns we got shotguns we got sidearms it's it's gets gangster <laughs> Uh, the night, uh, our next, our, our next bit of news. I don't, what the hell happened? Here we go. Uh, it's gonna, this is where you and I are going to be Saturday. We are going to be there. I'll be doing registration for a while. That's what paid for our supercross tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm building the, the mobile rig. I got it behind us, by the way. Right on, right on. Uh, let them know. Well, we're going to be at the, with the Florida BMX skate park series in at the skate park of Tampa on Saturday, the 11th. It's gonna registration starts at nine. The contest starts about one ish, I believe. But they've got um, street and oh, they have park and street. Park and street. Yeah. No park and street, but no bowl. No bowl. They have a bowl, but you can and you can ride it. But there's no competitions that, on the bowl. You'll be you'll be doing a bowl, probably. Right. Most likely. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go back and revisit some of the old ramps underneath make sure they're all secure and everything right visit some places anyway <laughs> park divisions are going to be 12 and under 13 to 15 16 29 30 and up women and pro so get on it. it's gonna be a good time skate park of uh, skate park of tampa it's a legendary place yeah it really is it is a great road it's a great spot i've been there. there many times 
All right, if you guys are a track team, a skate park, or if you guys are a club, an organization, whatever you guys are doing, if you're hosting an event, please email info at allthingsbmxshow.com. Let us know. We are happy to share your information. Uh, Melissa, it is about that time for your world famous trivia question. Here it comes, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, that's a that's a lot. Um, you saw what I did there. Yeah, that's a lot. How many bowls are in Tampa? Six. <laughs> All right, guys. I got. Uh sticker pack here and two uh, danger snack packs going out to the winner here. I got a never give up t-shirt and I got a backpack going out to the winner here. Uh, And while I'm thinking of it for all the previous winners, the mailing department is uh, extremely behind and um, very backed up. So your prize packs are still coming. I just have no idea when. <laughs> but we'll let you know as things start to start to make their way out of the studio. Um, you, guys, so you, my question, you guys can let her know by there's her there's her Instagram at right there. You can let her know. Send her a message or two. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'm also the one that gets those emails at info at all things BMX. <laughs> let her know. Com, let her know so. your. Let her know your angst to get your stickers. I I uh, I know the head of the HR department too, so I'll make sure I get it to the right person because it's me. <laughs> right. They should. They do uh, ship out. At all the, right. My question. They do ship out at the first it. of the year, Billy. That's when the checks clear. <laughs> what did he say? He said they ship out at the first of the year when the checks clear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's probably not too far off. <laughs> um, all right. Question for the, this evening. How many parts, screws and bolts included, does the average car have? I'm looking for a number. How many parts, screw is, screws and bolts included, does the average car have? 69, bro. Bro, that many? <laughs> Well, it probably is not that because that would be obvious. When I read this question, <laughs> when I read this question, I was like, "Damn, that's a." When I when I read the answer, I was like, "Wow, that... wow, really? Yeah, for sure." That's sort of the interesting point. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> All right, <laughs> that's and... that's unless you're in Miami. <laughs> and then divide that by right. three. <laughs> There's your hint. All right, and while we wait for uh, our Wait, it didn't. Son of a bitch. Uh, that didn't update. While we wait for our winner, we're just going to tell you next week. Who is on here next week? Jeff Upshaw. Uppy. Jeff Uppy. Upshaw. Next week's slide didn't update. Mm, it happens. Wait, sometime, you know what? Here's the thing, though. I think I can update it. Yeah, Uppy's going to be here next week. Uh, I'm gonna t- he's got a lot going on. So The whole Driven program. It's He's got that going on, and a he's whole part of the, lot He's more. part of the carbon, carbon cartel, I believe, isn't he? Yes, he is. Look, here, I got it fixed up. There you go. Sometimes, you know. Um, it happens. You it know, happens. what didn't happen tonight was the audio didn't mess up. <laughs> Knock on wood. Right. But uh, we, have, uh, we have Upshaw hanging out with us next week. He's going to talk all about his his program he has at USA BMX and uh, his involvement with the Carbone Cartel and uh, Driven Academy. That thing's blowing up, so it's going to be uh, it's going to be a good show. It'll be fun. Right on. Yep. I've known Jeff for a long time yeah. since he was about eight nine, I think. Yeah. His dad, and awesome his, dude. His second daughter was born pretty recently. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Okay. Mm-hmm. Hey, speaking of that, little Tatum was born. From with Rachel and Brooke Crane, did you see that by chance? Uh, I think Rick didn't he? on Beer Budget BMX Live Facebook. Yeah, yeah he they posted about it. it. Yeah, that's awesome, man. <laughs> All I'm, right, I'm really, I'm really psyched for them. That was that's an awesome, awesome good thing. story. 
good story. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah. Um, we're going to move into our showcase segment. It's brought to you by our good friends over at Answer, which I got, the, I got, I got one of the coolest emails from them. I, I, I did. I got, the, I got a little chain heart, and it said, <laughs> buy your special one, the parts that matter. And it was a link to their website, so you could buy them bike parts. I was like, oh. I got I, that. I, I actually got that email, and I was like, it good? It was pretty good. It was. It was good marketing. Well played. I'm going to tell you right now, you're not getting bike parts for Valentine's Day. Well, I'm not buying you any <laughs> either, hon. All right, so we're going to start. Uh, Wait, what did you say? I missed it. I said you're not either. Um, oh, all right. <laughs> we're going to start with our newsmaker segment, or showcase segment. Sorry, showcase segment. Uh, Dirty Knobs Podcast. Um, this is their off week, so we're going to talk about the same show they had last week. Make sure you guys check it out. Dirty Dots Podcast is hosted by the BMX guys over there. It's Hollywood, Mike Miranda, EC, Eric Carter, JV, James Vicente. And they always bring you like the good stories from the 80s and 90s, and it's always behind the scenes. It's good stuff. And it's behind this. It's, it's it's just back in the day stuff. This is season two, episode three, and uh, it's with DC and uh, dropped the other week. Make sure you guys check it out. The link is in the chat. We're going to put the YouTube link along with the uh, pod or Apple podcast link too. Yeah, um, yeah, that's a that's a good episode too because Mike King pops in for a minute, yeah. and then I think uh, Glenn Pavlovsky <clears throat> jumps in there for a minute. Yeah, it's pretty good. It was a good episode. They're all they're all good episodes, but that There's, was dude. Those guys were more yeah. my era and more guys that like I hung out with. So right, it's pretty cool. Uh, Melissa, you want to let them know about the mom stuff? Uh, yeah, they uh, the last episode they've got on their page has to do with what to pack for the local races because everybody kind of comes at it from a different uh, thought process. So um, kind of interesting. Go check that out there. Uh, all over the place, wherever you get your podcast shows. Um, and yeah, Justin and I got a chance to sit down with them last Sunday and had an absolute blast. I can't, we'll let you know when our episode is coming out, but uh, talk about being able to check off a bucket list item I didn't yeah. know was on my list, but it was an awesome thing to be able to do together. It's pretty cool. It was, uh, yeah, be, being interviewed on a podcast show. It's a little different. It was right? weird. Well, um, I, well, two things. Like, I got to do that with Melissa, because I got, I was, didn't I get interviewed for what was that? The Real show? the berm. Yeah, it, I that did just that. came up a couple of, on yeah. my Facebook feed yeah, a couple yeah, yeah. months or weeks ago. I mean, I did that thing, but like, you know, it, it, Melissa was there with me too, but like, it was just Melissa mm -hmm. and I next to each other for the mom's talk thing, and it was super fun because they had some awesome questions Bro. yeah don't give it away though i know <laughs> i was trying to think of some fun teaser questions but i'm like nah like they had great questions like that's what it's all they about. really did they they put a lot of thought yeah. into it it, it, was, it was great we had a lot of fun when you can have a good conversation and just flows and it, it was funny that's what it's all about because before the show we were looking because um we were going to order dinner. We were studying. <laughs> we were studying and we were like, okay, we can probably. And then all of a sudden we we're like, nope, our, our, our conversation went way past that. So mm -hmm. it was a good time. It it really was. And we appreciate them and everything that they're doing uh, for the entire BMX scene. It's cool because they're coming in from like a, a fresh perspective, total different, angle. you know, totally different angle, yeah. no cutesy stuff. It's pretty much straightforward. And yeah. they're asking real, real questions that you can get some real, yeah. real data from. Yep. It, it was also fun to sort of learn that we had a little bit to do as far as inspiring their podcast. There's as far your as the teaser. All BMX. Yeah. So tune go. in to find out the story. Yeah. That's always cool. Ladies and gentlemen, your Saturday night special is better than a Leonard Skinner concert standing in front row tripping your ass off on acid. It's the Beer Budget BMX Show. It comes to you live every Saturday night. We don't know when it starts, but here's one thing I can tell you. <laughs> Miata, Rick Carter, and Mike coming to you live from California each and every week. They are bringing you 
the hottest stuff in BMX. Open forum every week. So you want to get in there, talk some ish, make sure you guys tune in. But you have to subscribe, follow to their Facebook page. And you can follow on their YouTube page. It's uh, under the Thunder Midget page. So make sure you guys do. You won't regret it. Melissa, did you know there's a Lane 8 podcast? There's a new episode. I have heard that. There's I a, haven't had the pleasure. There's a new but... episode titled Michael Bias, a Kiwi Racing in France. It's hosted by Todd Wilson. Who? No way. Todd Wilson. Todd, doesn't he do the news the up in Tampa? Guy? Yeah, he does. A, he's a news guy. He does weather and guy. he hosts news. Yep. Also does little segments and, and stuff, I believe. He hosted the other week. Right on. It was pretty impressive. All right, last but definitely not least, our good friends over at the BMX In Our Blood podcast show. You guys, make sure you guys tune in. Eric Bonnell, big time, dropped the other week. Make sure you guys tune in, tune out. It's a good podcast show. Hey, if you guys have anything you're doing as far as it comes to promoting BMX when it comes to you know, a podcast, a live stream show, prints, even if it's print, man, we want to promote it. Uh, you know, It can be like, what was the old school thing called? I, on, your, on your end table. Mega? What was that? It wasn't a. It wasn't a magazine. It was a. Zine. An end table book. A coffee zine. table book. It was yeah. a zine. I would fully support somebody if they started a zine in Florida. There you go. A anybody zine. like a, a true zine. I will be your first advertiser if someone can start it. <laughs> there you go. If you got a zine, you got a social media site, whatever it is. If you guys are promoting or helping BMX racing, let us know. Uh, we want to promote it. Okay. Um, it's a. It's a what we do here okay before we have chris call us melissa do we have a winner i do not all right chris beer Surprising. google google has failed chris google failed uh, so i got i got an off an, What's that? an off call that was correct so i, I know my answer is right <laughs> um one of our sponsors uh josh blair got it right oh, um not but, so Google says, let me blow back up to my answer here. So let me make sure I say it right. That there are 30,000 different parts, screws and bolts included in the average car. So I'll just roll over my prize pack into next week. All right. Hello. I got a couple close answers, but not, not just not anything right on the, on the head there. All right. All right. It is that time. Chris? It's that time. Okie How is everybody this week? We're rolling, man. Oh, hey, Melissa, thank you for bringing the warm weather back to Michigan. Yeah, I guess. I'm going to take partial credit. <laughs> yeah, she, got okay. char- she got charged extra on the carry-on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, shoot. All right. Um. Yeah, so let's see here. Birthday's brought to you by On Two Wheels. So go check out Jeremy and the guys under the bright orange tent at all the big races you go to. And they will take care of you with any bike parts you need or get get tuned up, true your wheels, whatever you it go. needs. Those guys take care of all that stuff over there. And hey, if hey, Chris, you uh, sorry? Real quick, I gotta give someone that's in the chat. He was a mentor to me real fast, and that's sure. uh uh my friend Buck from house of wheels uh, i just want to give him a big thanks for joining us this evening he was a mechanic at house of wheels when i worked there sorry to interrupt nice hey that's all right hey house of wheels home of uh john really Tomac. Care, man. that just happened all right take it away <laughs> sorry to interrupt i saw the name pop up i want to give him a shout out no problem um yeah so okay so if you're celebrating your birthday this week you have uh let's see here Kersey no- Noel, uh, Mike Redman, Nathan Streeby, Mike Jolly, Chris Snyder, Scott Schumer, Matt Heaps. Hey, so far so good, I think. Uh, let's see here. Nick Nick Michael, Steve oh, Gavin, know, Nick Jones. Uh, Glenn Scor... All right, here we go. Scor... Scornick. No, there's a... 
scour, scour I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Scour neck. <laughs> scour neck. Okay, I'll scour go with that one. Scour uh, this, this next one, I'm going to mess this up to James <laughs> Skin Manico. I, I actually know him. Say it's it. James Shana Monaco. Sean. Okay, oh, wow. I can see that. Sean, Sean and Monica. <laughs> doesn't like what I said, but okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Pete Owens, Charlie Borland, uh, Joe Mott. I assume that's a relation to uh, Melissa. Yep, that that's my middle brother. He's uh, his birthday Saturday. Okay. Uh, let's see here. T- Tyler Truman. Uh, Paige Pre- Preby? Preeb? I'll just go Preeb. Preeb. I think it's Pre- Preeb. Preeb. Yeah. Preeb. Okay. Bill Madden. Mike Aiken. Mike Aitken. Uh, Rob Hyde. Mark Wayne Billingsley. Let's see here. Lance Roberts. Steve Hoffman. <laughs> Tay Thomas, Justin Wheat, hey, Tyler Clumper, uh, Mike Miller, Tyler Lambert. What, what, what? Ah, oh, man, I screwed that up, didn't I? Okay, Terry okay. Lambert, Tyler, where did I? Oh, because I was, never mind, okay, I was <laughs> getting it from Clumper. Anyway, Terry Lambert, all right? Uh, Sh- Shasta Shredders, um, Mason Gray. We have a very special last birthday. And a very special birthday to Johnny Allen. All right. Happy birthday, Johnny. He, uh, a few, I think it was a year or two ago, he joined us in the after chat. Uh, it's very, very special. Happy birthday. Uh, glad you could join us this evening. Cool. Well, happy birthday, Johnny. I hope you have a great day. And uh, shoot, I was going to say something. I forgot what it was. Um, oh, the thing at Waterford Oaks, uh, the fundraiser down at uh, Modern Skate and Surf. I'm going to try and get out there to that. So if people are going, uh, look me up and say hi. And oh. tell them your birthday. My birthday? No, tell them your birthday. If they see you, they need to tell them your their birthday, and then you can add it to the birthday list. Oh, jeez. <laughs> keep an iPad. No, keep an iPad just, with you to be able to update that right away. Right. <laughs> just email the show with it. Send it to info at all things exactly. Hey, believe it or not, we actually had somebody email us tonight their birthday. I did. No way. I did. We did. Yeah. Yeah. Little Mason Gray, who was turning, I think it was nine. His dad oh. emailed us. Is it? Is it Great. really? Is it really Nicholas's Michael's birthday? That's Nick Jones. Oh. Yeah. I didn't. Okay. Was it cover really? cover blown? Well, like, yeah. Okay. So, is it really his birthday? I mean, oh, is it, on Facebook, it is. Is it Peter Jean Hernandez's birthday this evening? <laughs> I mean, I don't know when it is, but text him and ask. You do this for what the week ahead? It's from today until Tuesday. He okay, says, so he says sometime no. in the next week is his birthday. Yeah. He was in the chat earlier. Uh, he's saying, he's maybe saying that's that. just when he wants his birthday to be. Yeah. Well, he has so many aliases, <laughs> it's so hard to keep you up. Can't keep track of it. But, like him and I get banned from Facebook a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, oh, it could, I don't know, Nick, let us know. Is today your stuff. birthday? No, he said it's in April. Oh, I see oh. that. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Must be when he joined Facebook or something. Who All knows? Right. All right, Chris, thank you, you very know. much. Yep. Yeah. Hey, you guys have a great week. I will talk to you soon. Talk to you. See you, Chris. Bye, Chris. All right. Take care, guys. Bye. Always a good time. Birthdays are a good thing. <laughs> he had a couple of doozies tonight. He did. There was none snuck in there, though. I was looking for that. For that, that one looked a little sus. But, but you have to give it some time off. You yeah, know? you can't. You can't do it every week. No, you can't. Can't. 
Um, I want to thank everybody. <laughs> yeah, but when it's a long list like that, and he, he starts getting yeah. on a roll, that's when you need to slide it in there. Well, he, he messed point. up on the Tyler and the the you're right the other one. So Tyler and Carrie, they yeah, overlap. Yeah. yeah. You're right. All right. I want to thank everybody for joining us this evening. It was a pleasure. Always, it was a great show this evening. Thank you, Nick, for joining us and Lindsay and uh, uh, Epop in the background. <laughs> Yep, yep. And good luck to everyone this weekend in Houston. Uh, yeah, love to no hear kid. from you guys. Would love to hear how you guys do. Make sure you let us know. Um, thank you, Brian. Yeah, I'm looking. F- I'm looking forward to watching Houston. Yeah, you know some of it anyway. We'll I be- probably won't because we'll be at Supercross. We'll, we'll be at Supercross. <laughs> I was gonna say on your phone we'll while you're watching. Taking I'll, money, watch, I'll watch the ready? replay. It's a pro race, so I want to watch the replay <laughs> for sure. Oh, so. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that's that's. Well, thanks for driving over. Deal. Appreciate it. Yeah. You gotta, it's nice it. to see somebody there. Yep. I had a great time. I enjoyed doing it. It's pretty fun. Yep. Nick is like my, you know, long time buddy. Wanna Absolutely. Like to be there. And now we can do a little special plug on Capones because Justin and I had an amazing time hanging out with BF this past weekend. Yeah. And uh let's just say the stories are true. I've, I'm just saying it's 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 good. If you'd like to know more, <laughs> join us in the join after the chat. chat. <laughs> but before we join the after before you join the after chat again, thank you for each and every one of you for joining us this evening. Without you, we don't have a show. We appreciate you. You guys have a wonderful evening. As always, it's a pleasure. You guys have a safe night. I got, I got moto. I got moto.